Welcome back to the channel. We are here once again with my Cub Cadet 149, which I just call the 14 because I got a couple different ones of these and it's just easier to remember them that way. If this is your first visit to the channel. There's a playlist for this one that I'll link up there and down in the description so you can go check out things if you want. Today's video is just going to be an end of year wrap up. Uh, this thing really only works part time, so I only really use it in the summer to mow grass and then it just kind of hangs out in the winter time, at least at the moment. So normally at the end of the season, I like to go around the thing and talk about stuff that is usually just stuff we did in the spring. But now we've got a few years of this thing on YouTube, so we can go over a whole bunch of different things. But let's start off with what we did start off with this spring, which was splitting the tractor. I had a real nasty transmission leak back here that I spent about three years fighting. I finally gave up and just split the thing. If you don't want to go back in the playlist and look at it and you don't know what that means, on tractors it means basically you separate the transmission from the engine and usually when you do that it's about half of the machine you take away so that's why it's called splitting. And the source of that leak is a gasket that's way back in there behind the pump and that actually did cure my problem. I think around June-ish or so I made a post on the community tab where it was still leaking transmission fluid so I thought I hadn't got that fixed. It turns out all it was is the cover bolts right there had become loose somehow or not as tight as they needed to be, I guess. So I just snug them on down and the thing hasn't leaked another drop all summer. So finally, transmission leak is knocked out, I think. The other thing I addressed this spring, whether or not it really needed it, is I put two gauge battery cables on this thing, which were kind of a nightmare to get installed and way overkill for the project. But the reason I did that is because this thing has just been slow to crank uh, pretty much the whole time I've known the tractor. And I've known this thing for close to 30 years now, maybe more than 30 years. The condition of the cables that were on it weren't very good. So I figured if we're going to go, let's go big. Four gauge is the right size to go there just to file that away if you're thinking about doing the same thing. That said, I didn't notice any big improvement in performance, so I went ahead and made up a two-gauge ground and ran it straight up to the starter and then back to the chassis. That also seemed to make no difference whatsoever. I'm now beginning to suspect that maybe the actual magnets in the starter are getting weak. Uh, this starter was professionally rebuilt by a, a pretty well-qualified auto electric shop probably three or four years ago. And it certainly helped it out, but I still don't think it's right. So I think maybe there's just something up with that guy. Flip side of that coin is that before I had the auto electric shop rebuild that one, I just bought a Chinese one off of eBay and it 100% didn't work at all. It was seized when I got it. So if I can't buy a new one, I can't get it rebuilt. You know, what do you do? I suppose the next thing we dealt with this summer was probably also right around mid-year. I noticed this thing getting a louder and louder engine noise and it occurred to me and all the time I have owned it, which I have personally had it for like 15-ish years by now, 10 or 15 years. I've never checked the valve clearance in this thing. These motors run solid lifters, so you have to you know, manually adjust them from time to time. So I made a video where I did that, and right in here is the valve cover. I took it out and mowed with it once or maybe twice, and just as I was getting done mowing with it, either the first or second time, pulled it in the driveway and there's just oil pouring all the way down the side of the motor. To say I was concerned is an understatement. I didn't make a video on that because all it ended up being was that I was just too cowardly when I tightened the valve cover back down. Let's put a little bit more torque on that, filled the motor back up with oil, she was good to go. The clattering noise this thing has been making, I don't think it's gotten any worse over the summer, but it's, I don't think it's gotten any better either. I can't tell if maybe it's some of the tins or if it's, uh, I think the exhaust valve like we talked about in that video. So maybe, maybe not. I know this motor is not gonna last forever regardless. So someday we're gonna be tearing it down. I think the only other thing that warrants some follow-up on YouTube is probably the front tires and wheel bearings. For years and years I had a problem with this thing chewing up front wheel bearings. Like every year it would just destroy a set. Didn't matter if they were go-kart bearings from eBay or if they were expensive bearings from Cub Cadet, it was just continually shredding them. So a few years back I decided to start popping the seals out of them and repacking them with my own grease because they put basically no grease in them from the factory. And that seems to have pretty much 100% cured my problem. I have not yet checked it since the spring, other than just, you know, eyeball observation as I'm mowing. So we will learn together if they are still good right now. So there you can see I've got the axle free floating. And that's all the more play there is in the bearings. So that's basically perfect. Just a little more on this side, but I can actually see about half of that play is between the bearing and the wheel itself. See if I can illustrate the more silvery bit there is the actual bearing. And you, I think you'll be able to see the rim move around the outside of the bearing. Once they do that, 
there's really nothing you can do about it. I could maybe glue that bearing to the wheel or you know, have the wheel built back up with some weld and board back out on the lathe or something, but really this is not a huge deal. But anyway, yeah, wheel bearings are holding up great. I think this is the third season for most of them. I think maybe one of them was a little bit newer than that. Uh, repacking them with grease seems to be working out just great. So when you get new ones, just pop the seals, put grease in them and they'll be fine. Oh, and I should say those are all uh, eBay go-kart bearings. So they're, I don't know, six bucks a piece or something. Real cheap. And I think the only thing left to give an update on is the tires themselves too. These are D-Stone brand, which are just, you know, Chinese import, whatever. And I believe they're seven rib, because eight rib if we count, you know, the guys on the far outside. They came from Amazon and at the time I bought them, they were dirt cheap and I've had them for about three years, so they probably aren't cheap anymore, but they are holding up great. Mowing manners with them is really good. They don't tear up the grass or anything. That's exactly why I wanted a rib tire, just so they wouldn't shred anything. Uh, early on, I had some issues with my alignment, which were all my fault. And there's videos on me aligning this thing too, or segments of videos where I align it. But now I've got the alignment straightened out and everything. They're absolutely great. Uh, don't leak air. In fact, I don't think I've checked the air pressure in them since I've had them. So yeah, highly recommended. I've never heard of D-Stone before. Like I said, I'm sure they're the cheapest, you know, child labor Chinese tires you can get, but they're working out great for me. So I think that's the end of all the 2022 updates on the thing. Uh, all in all, this was a pretty uneventful season for it. Really didn't have any major breakdowns mid-season. You know, a couple of oil leaks that were really no big deal and nothing got particularly worse. Every spring I try and do something on the thing to make it just a little bit better. And there's a couple things I know it needs, but they're a little beyond DIY kind of stuff. So I'm not sure what the next thing on it will be. But for now, since I just pressure washed the whole thing, I'm gonna go around and hit all the grease zerks just to make sure I push any water out of them. I'm gonna do the same thing with the deck because I pressure washed the deck too. Then I'll probably light it up and let the carburetor run dry. And that's gonna be it until the spring. I like to change the oil in the spring. Usually I'll try and let the gas that was in it from the fall run all the way out in the first mowing of the spring. So that kind of takes care of itself. I suppose the only other thing I might mention is just so I don't have to keep track of it and so it stays out of trouble. I just like to zip tie that the PTO belt up to that spring right there. To be honest, I'm not sure that spring is a factory Cub Cadet thing or not, but mine has it, so that's what I do with it. And that keeps the belt out of the pulley if I need to run it in the winter, and it also keeps it from, you know, falling off the tractor. So just handy to have. So I'm gonna get the thing greased and shove back into its hole. If you need to know how to grease one, how to service one, I have a video in the playlist where I do all the maintenance on the thing. And I like all the annual maintenance. It's like an hour long video and it's time stamped, So you can go look at each thing if you need to. But as far as this video, I think that's about it. She's been really good for the year and I'm pretty happy that it was. So you guys who like the tractor, it's probably gonna be a little bit of a drought until the spring, but I promise you there will always be more Cub Cadet content on this channel. We got way too many of these things for there not to be. But as always, I want to thank you for stopping in for this video, and we'll catch you on the next one.